Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Dr. Valentine uh, Carter. Dr. Carter, welcome. Thank you. Now, you produced the guidelines on uh, Friday, detection of prostate cancer. Uh, tell us a little bit about those guidelines. First, I think it's important that it was a panel that produced the guidelines, a multidisciplinary panel that was represented by a lot of different specialties. And the guideline purpose was to help guide the urologist um, with respect to early detection of prostate cancer. And our focus here was to help urologists identify those individuals who were most likely to benefit from being tested or screened. And uh, the conclusion we came to based upon the evidence was that the group more likely to benefit would be men between ages 55 to 69, where we should be focusing our efforts. Your guidelines have uh, attracted a lot of attention. Uh, you've hardly been out of the news since you, uh, since you, since you made them. So what's different from uh, previous advice? The difference is um, the best practice statement, which re was released in 2009, uh, recommended uh, PSA testing beginning at age 40. Um, it did emphasize speaking to a physician and, and using shared decision making, but the current guideline does not uh, recommend screening as a routine for men under age 55, and that may well be the most controversial part of this uh, guideline. Uh, why? Because it turns out that those men have a very low risk of fatal cancers. They have a longer lead times, which means that if they're PSA tested, they're more likely to have their cancer de detected very, very early. And if they get treated, they are going to have to live with the harms of treatment for a longer period of time. So for all of those reasons, we concluded that these men, while some may benefit, there's probably more harm than benefit as compared to beginning screening at age 55. Why bring out the guidelines at this, uh, at this time? Why bring them out at all? Yes, and that's a good question. A lot of individuals probably uh, incorrectly conclude this was a reaction to the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, which it was not. The guideline uh, panel began their work two years ago, one year before the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force issued their guideline. And uh, the purpose of the guideline was to put together an evidence-based um, guideline that would help the urologist advise an average risk asymptomatic man about prostate cancer screening. Well, Dr. Scott, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. Fascinating subject, so thank you very much. You're very welcome.